Discord. Hi everyone, Alicia Lawrence here from WebPageFX bringing you another SEO webinar through Schweiky Media. Today we're going to talk about content marketing or more commonly known in the SEO world as a linkable asset. Google's recent updates have put SEOs in a very interesting position. We are having to move away from the traditional link building and SEO techniques, which can now bring more harm to your ranking than help, and into a new world of content marketing and online public relations. There are a few pros and cons to linkable assets. We're going to go ahead and look at some of the cons first. They are time-consuming uh, and expensive to create. Unless you have an in-house designer, you will have to hire an agency or a freelancer to do your design work, which can get very expensive. Uh, secondly, they don't guarantee results. I've seen plenty of great linkable assets that draw on just one or two links, which for the money you spend isn't worth it. Now, this goes without saying that maybe in the future that particular linkable asset will take off. You never know with evergreen content like this. So hopefully, what I'll share with you today will make sure your linkable assets do perform and garner the links that you deserve. Now let's go ahead and look at some of those pros. They are a gift that keeps on giving. Most link building techniques like guest posts are a one and done deal. You publish the post and get one link, but linkable assets have a longer life and will continue to draw links to your site years down the road. And that's why we like to call them assets. Secondly, this is the way Google wants it done. Matt Cuts continues to emphasize that if you want to do SEO right, think quality content. He proved this again and again. Even uh, these past few weeks, he had a blog post that went up about how they're going to devalue guest posting, which is one of the main ways people were doing link building. Of course, when he says devalue guest posting, that also talks about more of the cheaper end of guest posting, not quality guest posts. Like if uh, you went to a blog farm that had just one blogger that controlled 20 blogs and you got a link on all those blogs, that's the type of guest posting that he is devaluing now, part of the spam team there at Google. Um, thirdly, it increases visibility and traffic. Linkable assets are published usually on your website's blog. Creating additional pages on your blog gives your site more index pages and links which inevitably gives you a larger slice of the online pie and more of a chance for potential customers to find you. Not only do you get an increase of traffic to your site, but you also receive more shares and social signals which do impact your search ranking and in general the reach of your brand. Uh, according to an infographic by Content Plus, which I'll actually show you a portion of it, blogs on company sites result in 55% more visitors. Companies with blogs get 97% more inbound links than others, and 37% of marketers say blogs are the most valuable content type for marketers. Now, those are pretty some strong facts about the power of content for a company. Before diving into how to create successful linkable assets, let's take a look at a few types of linkable assets. I actually have them up here for you. These are some uh, that from around the web as well as some that WebPageFX itself uh, put together for our clients. Uh, here's one. This is an infographic. It's shorter than what you probably are used to. You can tell that's, that's just it right there. Usually infographics are a little bit longer, um, but we found that shorter ones tend to get more links. Uh, and you've probably seen this all around the web. They became very popular in 2012 as a way to simplify complex data in visual form. Next, we have videos and motion graphics. Let's see here. Oh, this one doesn't look like it's loading quite right. But what they do is on videos and motion graphics, I'm sure you have seen as well. Oh, looks like it's loading now. Uh, they are sometimes developed from, motion, or from infographics. That's how motion graphics come about. Uh, they take an infographic, break it down, make it visual. They're a less popular linkable asset because people often don't include the credit at the end of the video. And many people can just watch it from YouTube instead of going to the company's website. Uh, let me scroll down here. Usually, this is actually on the client's blog, so it doesn't have the link down here. But in the embed code, you see that uh, there is a link to Clarity Way so that when people embed it, they will have that link 
you know, sourced by Clarity Way. And therefore, that's a way of link building and uh, spreading the word about their brand. And they also have at the very end, I don't know if this will load uh, quick enough, but at the very end, whoops, uh, they have their logo at the end there as well. So it's kind of reinforcing the brand as well. But once again, people can just go to YouTube and they sh use that shareable link there. And so oftentimes, you'll miss getting cited uh, for your work because people will just share that YouTube link instead. Next, we'll go ahead and look at a, a motion graphic. Uh, these web graphics, I'm, I'm sorry, not motion graphic, we're going to look at web graphics, uh, which are a vault infographic that allows the user to interact with it. Uh, it can be as simple as CJ Pony Park's horizontal moving graphic. If you uh, look over here, you can actually use the keys and move the car over. And it's, it's an infographic, but it's interactive, so we call it a web graphic. And people uh, tend to really like these because, you know, they can move back and forth and uh, really just enjoy the infographic and its usability. Now, this is a very simple web graphic. Uh, there's more complex ones, like this one by Condé Nast. Uh, you have their uh, Reader's Choice Awards, which they kind of put out into this interactive graphic, uh, which has a lot more um, complex HTML involved in creating it. And so most people haven't really jumped on this bag yet. You'll see more higher-end brands doing it. Uh, but it is becoming more doable for smaller companies as well, uh, as more and more people learn the programming. Next, we have Skyscraper Content. Uh, it's the newest addition to our linkable asset family. Skyscraper Content is a long-form blog post of around 2,000 words or more and breaks it up with pictures, graphics, videos. Uh, the best Skyscraper Content is optimized with schema markup. Uh, you can see one of the best examples right here uh, on the New York Times. You saw the gist at the beginning, and we have a video. And you can tell it's very long. Uh, this is one of the longer ones I've ever seen. And you even have these really cool graphics in there, and then you have pictures. And so it just it's more than just content. It's a uh, skyscraper. It's a long form of um, very interactive and visual content. And a lot of people are finding that readers do enjoy these longer versions. I know it was uh, really popular a few years back saying, short is how it goes. You know, that's kind of what started the infographic, making it quick to understand, understand statistics and, and information. But people are now coming back to these uh, long form readings. Now, linkable assets aren't confined to just these four types. Whatever works for your company as a valuable asset on your site that people link to is whatever you should be creating, whether that is ebook, white papers, research, or even just resource pages. Now we're going to go back to this PowerPoint. And uh, before, uh, if you're not quite sure what you should be doing, uh, content-wise, what you should be creating. Uh, here are a few tips to help you know what will work for your company. So tip one, pick a topic that springs from one of your keywords and is being searched by your potential customers. By now, you should already have a good amount of keywords that you are optimizing your site for. Come up with a few ideas you think your customers are curious about along the topics of your keywords. This is a great way to get long-form keywords into your website so Google can rank you for those. You can also go to Uber Suggest, Google Trends, or even Yahoo Answers to see what are popular phrases or questions surrounding that keyword. Tip two. Oops, see if it goes there. Tip two is measure the potential before creating the linkable asset. After you decide on a few topic ideas, run them through the following tests. Which topic has the highest search demand? Has anyone done this before? If so, how are you going to make it unique? Will this drive high intent qualified traffic, meaning will it attract and drive traffic that is likely to convert on your site? How big is the audience that would be interested in linking to this asset? Is this topic doable? Does the research exist or could you do your own research? And of course, the ultimate test is to pitch it to a journalist from a high authority news site. That's also a great way to know whether 
your readers would be interested in that kind of topic. Yes, maybe the ones of your blog would be, but what about the general public that you're trying to get as a consumer? When you pitch it to a journalist, they'll be able to tell, oh, no, you don't want to do that type of content because we won't accept it because of this. Or maybe they tell you, actually, we're looking for a piece of content like this. I've actually run into a, 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 a content example like that when I was doing it for a client, and we pitched it to ABC, and we found out, oh, they want something else. So we're actually making something specifically to put on ABC, but it's going to be on our client's blog so that they'll get the credit for that link, as well as more journalists and blogs are able to link to it and reference it. Tip three, find your story. The best linkable assets have a story or theme behind it. Even infographics usually have a problem represented through statistics followed by a resolution of sorts. Web graphics and smaller infographics usually just follow a theme like the world's tallest building like I showed you earlier. Another question you should consider is what's the best way to display this content or data? If it has a strong storyline, perhaps an ebook or skyscraper content would be best. If it has complex statistics, use a web graphic. If you're looking to get leads as well as links, consider writing a how-to or a guide, which can be downloaded for free by the user if they give their name and email, which gives you a lot of leads that way. Tip four, give people a reason to share it. I found articles that include a mod podge of quotes or advice from top professionals in that field do very well in getting links on social media. Because when you tell someone you included their info in a post, they're more likely to share it and perhaps link to your post from their own site. This is just one of many ways to encourage people to share your linkable asset. Tip five, optimize your linkable asset. This includes your keywords in the meta description and title, which I highly encourage you guys to get the WordPress plugin for SEO Yoast. Uh, that's a great plugin that will help you make sure you have meta descriptions um, and that your headline and title are clear. If possible, include schema markup and a rich snippet, which is a picture or graphic that shows next to your search result for that page. Uh, people are more likely to click on your listing if you have a picture by it. Uh, don't forget to include an embed box so others can easily embed your graphic along with a credit link back to your website. Most times, this won't be an issue because people will just link back to your resource from Anchor Text instead of actually embedding it. Uh, but it's always good to have that option if people do want to embed it. And tip six, get the snowball moving. The ultimate goal of your linkable asset is to get enough momentum to get links on its own. But before it can do that, you have to do your part in getting that snowball started. Share the linkable asset multiple times across your social channels. Send it to relevant journalists and bloggers. Run a stumble upon campaign and submit it to Reddit. Now, before I leave today, I want to share a few quick ways to measure the success of your linkable asset. And I'm actually going to... I can sit out once more, and I'm going to take you to a site called A-H-A-R-E-F-S, which a -R -E -F -S, it depends how you wish to pronounce it. But uh, first uh, would be to look at your backlinks. That's a great way to tell the success of your linkable assets. Uh, you can find trackbacks on Google Analytics, or you can look at HRF, which I found to be a little easier to get an accurate reading on the success of your linkable assets. Now just plug in the URL, the linkable asset. And uh, I did for this one my own blog, Mark Comland. And you can see here I went ahead and went down to the domains. You can see all the type of domains I have, the do follows, the redirects. I even have an educational link in there. Uh, and then I have no followers as well. And it's good to have a wide variety of that. And you can see even the referring domains that have a link to me down here, uh, their domain rank, uh, when it was ranked or when the HRS saw it on here, and it also provides a whole bunch of different ways that you can uh, just see who's linking to you and a progression of your linkable asset. Uh, like right here, I just typed in my main, and that's where I didn't have any uh, social signals, uh, but if I typed in like a specific linkable asset, um, it would also show, you know, who's linking, who's, you know, lost referring pages, the new ones, and it shows you a good progression path there. 
And so it's always good to see that uh, and get a good idea of how well that page is ranking or doing. And once again, that's just a main domain, so it doesn't really show any good signals. Uh, and most of the time when you do an actual linkable asset, you'll see a, a little stair step there showing that it's continually being used. Uh, you can also find who shared your linkable asset through a basic Google search. So if I go over here by Google, um, and now if it was a video, you won't be able to do this, but uh, for actual images that are plugged into there, you can actually do a reverse image search and find the image wherever it was on the web. So you're going to go up here to images. Let load, and you're going to click search by image. And that's how you get to reverse image search. I'll go ahead and do it on World Tallest Towers. I'm going to right click, copy image URL. If it's not online, you can even upload a picture uh, by doing upload a picture. But here I got the URL, search by image. And Google is going to pull up everywhere that it sees that image. So, you know, it sees right there, it was online, and then it shows. You know, where it could be, it shows very similar images. And then right here is the exact matches. And you can see that, it, obviously, it's on the client's blog. It's on different uh, blogs there. And you can just go through the pages and get all the places that it's been on. So that's a great way to find your linkable asset if you have no idea where it is. And not everyone will include that credit link, so sometimes you do have to search by the photo and then follow up that person. Hey, I saw that you included my photo. Thanks so much. But if you wouldn't mind giving me a credit link, that would very much appreciate it. And I'm sure they'll be very much so obliged. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this basic overview of linkable assets. If you have any questions, Feel free to email me, or if you'd like to hire WebPageFX for your SEO or content marketing needs, feel free to email me at alicia at webpagefx.com. And thanks for listening.